gon' chew me, cause the showtime. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rhymes, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. So we got a few announcements before we hop into PlayStation State of Play. So Assassin's Creed Shadows has been pushed back to February 14th, 2025, instead of November 14th, 2024. The statement um, was that um, they needed more time to polish and refine the experience, pushing further some of our key features. So, How many Assassin's Creed games have been pushed back from their original release date? I can't even remember. I am worried, honestly, about this game now. No, because I can recall when they've done that. They've probably, and if somebody be like, man, they did it with Valhalla, what you talking about? Then I just forgot. But from what I remember, the pre orders were not looking that good. There's still controversy around the game, whether you're on the side of what they should have and could have and would have done with their characters. That's very divisive, and I'm not going to bring that up because we already, already talked about it in enough but i don't know i didn't because when it comes to that release date you might be trying to get into a window where it's not too many games but i think some games are dropping around that time frame Mm -hmm. i don't know if it's in the rpg action adventure realm because i know dragon age is still dropping this year and dragon ball is a fighting game but i don't know i think they probably i think ubisoft really just disappointed the bulk of the fans and that may just be impacting them. I don't know what they're going to do if they're going to alter the story. I doubt that. It's too late in development for yeah, them to do they, any of that. Yeah. I. But polishment looks good. I'm never mad if y'all polish a video game. But being that I also heard behind the scenes there's some low pre-orders and all the controversy surrounding it, I worry about the success of the game and how this may impact their future decisions. I mean, it also nice. could be. It also could be the pre. It could be some business reasonings behind it. Maybe the low pre-order sales was like, okay, let's go back and maybe try to polish and refine some things. So when we do release, maybe that will encourage more people to buy instead of releasing when they said they were. Then it's, oh, this game has bugs, plus the controversy, plus this, then here, this is the reason why the pre-order sales were low, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Oh, February is kind of packed. They got Kingdom Come Deliverance coming out February 11th. Avowed is coming out February 18th. Monster Hunter Wilds, which always gets a certain level of sales, is coming out February 28th. So February is a pretty packed month for gaming. So that just tells you right there that the move wasn't to isolate itself. Yeah, because if they were trying to isolate themselves, they should have went early in January or pushed it even further back to like April or May. So I'm just going to go with that they really want to polish and refine the game. I feel hmm. yeah, I could see I could see them being confident. I don't know. I'm an Assassin's Creed fan and I I'm still seeing people complain about it. Like I haven't seen anyone even when it comes to combat like obviously like obviously there's the people who complain about like the choice of the main, one of the MCs. But I also haven't seen anyone just highlight the combat, the graphics. The graphics are usually consistent. It still looks pretty good. But I also don't see them doing anything much better. Even with Mirage, when it was like back to the basics, I already told y'all Mirage kind of fell flat for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're going to try to add something that's going to surprise us as fans and make us go, oh, Assassin's Creed is back or what. I'm going to play it, but... I don't know. I, I think it just goes back to that conversation that we had the first time is that given the controversy and given that the fans are divisive on the character choices for this game is that they they yeah. they have a lot of pressure on how they release this game and the execution and things like that. And it, it could just be possible that this is just giving the developers a bit more time to clean up a few things. So when this does come out, whatever, you know, because the controversy is going to come back up and everything that hopefully that they are confident that they put out a good game, that they've cleaned it up and polished it enough as they could. So when that controversy eventually comes back, they can say, you know, at least we, you know, cleaned up what we could. Exactly. What I'm interested to see, because it depends on how they handle their contracts and their NDAs, because 
when games release, that's when you start to hear more about how the developers felt and what right. impact they felt from their business management teams. Cause the process that always, and stuff like that. That always happens. Something goes good. Oh my gosh, I was a part of the main team. Something goes bad. Well, huh, we were in the back saying this was going to be trash. We ain't want this to happen. The big wigs yeah. told us to do it. Yeah. We're we're probably going to see that later. Because I even... Yeah. Sir- I mean, they did the same. They did the same thing with Cyberpunk. When that, when yeah. everything went down, like yeah, I looked more, I looked more into the cyberpunk situation for a class that I had about like investments and like losing money and stuff like that. And CD Projekt Red got sued yeah, for, the, sure. for that. They got sued by their investors for how they, they handled pissed. that side. They how they handled that cyberpunk situation. They were pissed because y'all they, ain't estimated pro- appropriately. Y'all they, they were horrible. telling they weren't communicating like the status of the game correctly. They were telling the investors one thing while the developers never on the back end. Like, why would y'all tell them that? Like, that see that whole cyberpunk situation is got bad. Nasty. That's what I'm saying. Cyberpunk, cyberpunk. It took them two years to get a patch that made the game playable. Y'all should have y'all should have scoped better, and y'all should have released that game two years later. I don't care if it was gonna be a seven year. Tell the investors that y'all money gonna come back because y'all gonna release some fire, yeah. and they messed it up. But because Dragon Age is in the same boat right now, like Veilgar, that first trailer, I was one of the people who said this looks very cartoony. It mm-hmm. doesn't give off the vibe of Dragon Age, and then the fans was like, "Y'all ain't real fans." Dragon Age, hey, Dragon Age always had unserious moments and blah 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 blah. Not this unserious. It didn't play like some modern. Oh my gosh, we're trying to appeal to that ironic comedy that you're seeing in new age comedies now that are geared more towards older Gen Z folks nowadays. Dragon Age wasn't like that at first. And now you see people like Luke Steffens who get to get behind with the developers and they play those games. Um, They are in those controlled environments where basically they get the beta test. Mm-hmm. And he was saying even the developers didn't like that trailer. It was their management teams that was like, oh my gosh, this is who we need to appeal to. And even the developers was like, this does not represent our game well. And it didn't. Now, I, fans I would, like me are like, these new trailers look good. I would say the gameplay that they showed at PlayStation State of Play looked completely different from that initial trailer that we saw. Was that... Whose who's, um, showcase was that when they showed that first... I, I don't think it was Ubisoft. Was it Summer Summer Games Fest? Was it Summer Fest? Game Fest? Was it Summer Game so. Fest? Maybe. It was something like that because now Sony got the um, marketing rights to Dragon Age. So that's why all you want to see is PlayStation on the trailer. But I would now. say I would say that gameplay that they showed at State of Play and what we saw initially are like two completely different vibes. Night and day mm-hmm. makes you think you're seeing a whole different game, and it it just makes you think like, are what are these business management folks over? Like, I know y'all try to see trends on social media and how people feel about things, but when y'all make games, y'all got to make them for the fans. Y'all 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 need to stop trying to get these brownie points from other arenas in the social political other landscape. demographics Man, yeah these stick stick to your fans and make a good that. game mm-hmm. yeah. that's all they want is money exactly indeed but other announcements and then we'll fully hop into playstation state of play so playstation just celebrated their 30th anniversary they've announced the ps5 pro they've announced the 30th edition playstation i think that's also a ps5 pro the 30th edition that they just put so. out. Um, mm. And, you know, you can get the controller. You can get the dual shot, which is just the basic controller in the 30th, 30th edition. Or you can get the dual shot edge, which is the one where you can pull off the analog sticks and customize it yeah. the way that you want to. Um, and then Nintendo also just celebrated their 135th anniversary. So shout out to... Nintendo and PlayStation for sticking with it this long. What was the console and or game that made y'all gamers, if y'all can recall? My first PlayStation experience was PlayStation 1, playing it with my cousin. She was into like Tomb Raider. Um, She had like a couple sports games on there that she used to play. But my first... And then she got the PlayStation 2, and I used to play Grand Theft Auto, Street 3, Midnight Club, Need for Speed. I finally got my official PlayStation console, I think, was the PlayStation 2. When they came out with that PS2 Slim, the real small joint, okay. that was my first PlayStation console. Then I got the PSP, then I got the 3, 4, and then we up there with 5. Nintendo... So 
Keep going. Nintendo was definitely in 64. So you started Or it might have been Game too? Boy. It might have been Game Boy. It was Game Boy in N64 for console. And then my parents got me a GameCube. I believe my first full N- Nintendo console was GameCube. And then I got the Game Boys, Game Boy SP, DS, and all that stuff. Wii's and all of that. Hmm. I, Ralph, what was your introduction into gaming? I can't remember. I know it was Nintendo. It was the uh, flat one, like the purple kind of see-through one. Uh, the square, the well, square giant, or the advance, the, the Game Boy Advance. The, yeah, the Game Boy Advance. That was the first okay. one I had. Oh, uh, the tanky I, one. Yeah, yeah, I had that. But one. you know, they I had, had the, the um advance. when they were doing like the see through color design because they yeah. did it with PlayStation, the controllers and stuff like that. Yeah, sixty four controllers had that. Yeah, hell yeah. I started with that. Uh, then I went to the PlayStation Portable, which. If you remember, the PlayStation Portable actually had a small screen that was attached. It was it was literally like its own little compartment. It had like a small screen that you could put the game in and have control and just take it on the go and play wherever. I had that. Uh, I had the PlayStation 1, which was that big uh, that block. Big gray, that big gray, that big gray, that block. big gray box. <laughs> I had that. Uh, then I moved to Xbox. Got an Xbox 360. Um I ended up getting a PlayStation 2 right after getting the Xbox uh, 360. Just wanted to go back just to have it. Fair. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, I didn't get the PlayStation 3. I went back with Xbox. I, I skipped the PlayStation. I did not. Yeah. I don't know. Me and the PlayStation, PlayStation 3, 3 was that one that was $500, remember? Yeah. When they yeah. overpriced the when hell they, out of that. Hell yeah. Yeah. When and that I first could. came out. I was like, God, looking that was at back the- in the day, five hundred dollars <laughs> yeah. too. Five hundred dollars yeah. was different then than yeah. it is now. Because I was looking at the PS3, I was like, damn, five hundred dollars. Back given, then, given my parents bought it, and I, I was thinking maybe it was like maybe three hundred or whatever. Because like GameCube mm-hmm. used to be a hundred dollars off rip. Yeah, GameCube used to be a hundred dollars. I think when the Wii came out, I think the Wii was like maybe like two hundred, two fifty. Yeah, I think the I think, Wii was yeah, like two fifty. Like and then I looked at them prices and the the price jump from the PS2 to the PS3. I said, "Damn!" That's that's why 360 I think was doing good that generation because they overpriced themselves. I I will remember that. I just I, don't remember. I don't remember like seeing a, or talking to a lot of people who had PS3s. Yeah, like everybody I, I talked yeah. to was like Xbox 360, Xbox 360. Even with the little red mm-hmm. ring of death. <laughs> folks was rolling folks was still rolling with the xbox 360s right. i experienced the red ring of death and it was such a dangerous experience <laughs> Ooh, i'm, I'm glad Terrible. i did not thank god I bro you, that was back when like xbox live and stuff was still very new like online gaming yeah. was still new uh-huh. my mom had to watch like youtube videos with me and we plug in my 360 up to her little windows xp desktop <laughs> trying to download patches and everything <laughs> for it <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was so pissed. I was like, Mom, my Xbox broke! <laughs> mm. I can sad see. Time. Sad time, sad time. Man. They couldn't, they couldn't. Y'all hear that? I do hear some music in the background. That must be Antoine and King. Well, somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, my first console, it's between the N64 and the Game Boy. My cousin had the PS1 and we played that okay. Yu-Gi-Oh game. And Spider Man on it, and my auntie had the OG Xbox, and we played some little fantasy game. And I still don't know the name of it, but in sixty four, I was playing Tarzan, Mario Kart sixty four, Super nice. Mario, WWE two thousand. I used Diddy Kong Racing, yeah, um, double uh, 007. 007 was fire on the PlayStation. Smash yeah. Bros. on the 64 is interesting to see as because I didn't play, I didn't when I initially had N64, I didn't play Smash Bros. So I came into Smash Bros. when Melee came out. Melee. Mm-hmm. On GameCube. Mm-hmm. So I played Melee, Brawl, Ultimate, and then I went over to a friend's house and he had Smash Bros. 64. And I looked at the graphics, the character roster. Let's just start there. Tiny. Tiny. Then the graphics, I was like, this is interesting. I appreciate the growth of Super Smash Bros. from 64 till now. Even Mario Kart, I'll give it to those two. Shit, I'll give it to Zelda too. 
look, when it comes to Mario Kart, bro, Double Dash is still in my top three. It's Mario Kart Wii, Double Dash, and after that, y'all can pick y'all y'all can pick y'all poison. It's whoever y'all want to put for number three. I would say my number one, just because I play it more frequently, like now is MK8. MK, I don't know what they would do on Mario Kart 9 to beat what they've done with 8. Like, number mm-hmm. one is 8. The I online think be my fe- number three, Dan. The online features, the track selection, all of the, the customization features. I, I'm i not mad at you picking Wii, because Wii was when we first got that taste of, like, customization, yeah. the different type of cars that you can get and the players and stuff like that. I'll give you that. And then Double Dash, I'll give you Double Dash because that was when I got that GameCube. I had the GameCube bundle pack that came with Double Dash. Hmm. Look, bro. I just remember those GameCube days, bro, when you would just sit down, you plug up your four controllers back when memory cards was what? Eight megabytes? Yeah. Y'all remember how those memory cards and we would have to go get them at Toys R Us? (laughs) Toys R Us Best Buy. Crazy. Look, and the... I remember I was playing one game. It was Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness on GameCube. They was like, oh, you need a memory card to play this. And then my PlayStation 2 did the same thing with the Ratchet and Clank. I was like, where do I get a memory card? What is that? Shout out <laughs> shout out to my dad because I never had to worry about memory cards. Because when they bought me that game, they got me a memory card. The memory right. card came. They, I, I would open the first present and it's the console. And then I open the next box and it's a couple games and a memory card. And I'll be like, I'm sick. Look, my mom was looking at me like, what's a memory card? I'm like, look, the screen says I need a memory card or I can't save my game data. And Same. she's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> she she on the phone with like her friend. Baby, baby, ask, ask, ask your son. He got a game, right? I just bought Ryan this game. Ask him what a memory card is. <laughs> why, why he need a memory card? Because I'm, uh... I'm finna cuss him out. He asked me one more time about a memory card. <laughs> Bro. Oh my god. And now these games are called what is it? Not legacy. What's the word for saying they're old? Vintage. Not antique. That, like now the Wii is like vintage or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, how old are we? I would say the minute this is the moment I knew that we was finna go vintage. When they said they were shutting down the Nintendo store on the Wii U, yeah. I said, Oh, it's raps for y'all. It's raps. Yeah. But when they start they, shutting, when they start shutting down online features and stores for certain consoles, it's reps for y'all. But these folks will never know how we felt when the we when Mario Kart Wii came out and we had them wheels. It was the marketing. Had, uh, that was the marketing it, for the Wii. The marketing for the Wii for Mario Kart for the sports games, especially when Mario and Sonic at the Olympics came out. Mm-hmm. You oh, over yeah. here on the track game the doing mar- all of this. Man. The marketing. For the Wii, look. for some of those games, look, Superb. folks talk about toxic masculinity now. When Wii Sports Boxing came out, you want to know what all the guy cousins were fussing about in, at Thanksgiving dinner? Oh God, you ain't gonna beat me in no box. You boxing, ain't gonna beat me in no box. Boxing, <laughs> boxing bowling. Yeah, look, bro. Nintendo and PlayStation came a long way. Shout out to them. Nah, for real. Mm-hmm. For real. I'm definitely excited on what they do next. Uh, PlayStation just announced the PS5 Pro. We're still waiting for the Switch 2 announcement. I That's going to that's gonna be the next big thing. I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm ready for them to announce the Switch 2 and everything that's coming with it. How long are we away from that? Next year? They said, they said it's next year. They said they're not announcing it. Until it no... I think they said they are not announcing the Switch 2 this year at all. Like, it's mm-hmm. gotten to the point to where when they announce a Nintendo Direct, they have to specifically state in the announcement that there will be no mention of the Switch 2. Mario Kart 9, is that going to be the dropper game or is it going to be a Zelda game? I There's, It's going to be that one game and it's going to be an exclusive. Super, another Super Mario 2D? 3D? I think it's going to be Kart. I think if if we want to stick with tradition, if we stick with tradition, it's going to be Mario Kart. They're going to do more. They'll they'll probably do Mario Kart and Zelda at the same time. Although I don't know if they'll do Zelda because they just dropped that new Zelda game. Like and that was that this, this year or last week. year. That this is this year, not um, Tears of the Kingdom. This is a new Legend of Zelda game that they just dropped recently. Hmm. Oh, that missed my I missed that on my okay. timeline. What's it called? It's called the um. 
See, this is why we need Antoine on these regular episodes, too. I just <laughs> talked to Antoine about this. Mm. Echoes See? of wisdom. Echoes mm. of wisdom? Okay. Yeah, it gotta be a Mario Kart. I it's, don't know what they're going to do with Smash gonna, Brothers. It's probably going to be... I, I think they're going to do Smash Bros. I think Mario Kart and Smash Bros. are defaults. I just don't know how they're going to do it. Like when we were when we were just ranking the Mario Kart stuff, I, I don't know what they're going to pull out their ass for Mario Kart 9. Now, I'm telling them the planes. I'm telling them bring back the planes, I, but I don't know. I, I say make it a triathlon. I, I we did we had that argument. Planes, boats, and cars. Make it all three. I don't know because the way that they've built out MK8, like people are still playing online. Anytime I play MK8, I'm online. I'm not playing no Grand Prix, time trials, none of that. I'm online, and there's consistently people. There's a YouTube channel that I watch where he's cons- they they be playing for real tournaments and all of that. They got Discord channels for this mm-hmm. shit. I don't know, bro. Nintendo, it's Nintendo. I, I, the only thing I hope they do, I hope they make this next console so valuable that we have to get it. Because I remember when the Switch Two dropped at first. I think we was all, I think we was all in college talking about this in um, the first week. Yeah, when when Switch One dropped, we was all like, "Nah, when Smash Bros. dropped, that's when we're going to get Switches." And that's when I got mine yeah. instantly. I think they're gonna have to. I think I know they they came out with the was it the Switch. LED, like what's that? OLED, something. the switch yeah, OLED OLED. or something yeah. like that. They're gonna I think just as because of how graphics have come a long way, the demand, and especially with some of the um the pushback from them trying to put like those high quality games on that system, that Mortal Kombat shit, just to be just to put out okay. one example, they're going to they're going to have to pull out the muscle for this first showcase of this system and that's the thing it's like i I wonder if they're going to try new features obviously they're the motion control leaders but i'm like what's going to be that new thing for this exactly. if it's just good graphics i'm not mad but what is that new thing y'all are doing with the switch to i i don't know In my opinion, it has to be better graphics it has to because that's again, number one like you said that's World definitely combat was terrible it definitely it was terrible, but I feel like that's expected though. Like we're expecting it to be better graphics. What's going to be that one thing that we're not going to be expecting that they put in the switch to? Hmm. VR. So, so, man, shit, AR. I don't know. They just oh. made the announcement that they're not going to do. They're not going to be doing anything with AI, so we can count that out. Yeah, I can see VR to an extent. But I don't know. I mean, that's the next. That's the yeah. next thing up. Place they you got play if they want yeah. to compete. That's going back to our year old conversation. If they want to compete, PlayStation VR. If they Nintendo could easily do it. Yeah, because the next console yeah. generation. Now that we're finally getting refreshes, like from Sony, the next console generation is like three to five years away. But the whole thing is. Y'all still ain't even mastered 4K60 on a lot of games, so pushing for like 8K60 or something like that probably unnecessary. If anything, right. y'all are have to going to have to polish and integrate VR fully. Mm-hmm. Like PlayStation has done it, but now Microsoft need to catch on board too, unless they finna go the route where they don't have consoles anymore, which a lot of people are predicting. I would hate that, but it seems like that's what they might go for. I can see mm-hmm. that happening with Microsoft. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We'll wait. 2025. We'll see. But um, moving into PlayStation State of Play, we did mention some of the games that they showed and announced. Um, like they showed a gameplay trailer for Dragon Age. Ryan mentioned uh, Monster Hunter. Um, they did announce the Ghost of Tsushima sequel, the Ghost of Yoti. Yote, Yote, Yote. Yote. Um, a DLC for Astrobot. Uh, Power World. Interesting. Lee enough is coming to PS5. And I feel like that's hilarious because before that's the a... PlayStation State of Play, they Nintendo was filing mm-hmm. that lawsuit. And then they turned around at the PlayStation State of Play and said, Yeah, Paul World's coming to the PS5. That's mm-hmm. so funny. That's be, so fucking funny. It's funny how funny. that works, right? It's funny that is, how that works, right? That is that's so a fucking slap funny. To Nintendo's face, if I've ever seen one. 
here's here's the thing. I know we got to talk about everything else. I know we got to talk about everything else, but somebody need to give Pokemon some competition to make them get they they sh- together. Go ahead, I'm say glad. It. No, I'm glad. I already been cussing too much. I'm glad that Power <laughs> World is putting some fire under their ass. I'll say that for you. I'm glad that Power World is getting Pokemon together and making them um, stress a little bit because y'all need to innovate. I'm sorry, all y'all Nintendo fans who always come at us because y'all be the first ones coming. I don't care. I don't care. They need to do better. We need some fire mm-hmm. under their ass. Let Power World win. Let Power World get up there and put some fire on her. Innovate. I just thought it was hilarious. They was they was like, oh, you got a lot, so we got some for your ass. And Sony's like, look what we got, Power World. That is her, <laughs> that is her, that was so funny to me. Cause I think we talked about it. A nice Pokemon game. With proper graphics on Xbox and Sony, listen, with the actual graphical fidelity to actually do some great stuff without having to see map mountains load up in the background. Oh, mm-hmm. I was over with. I would be interested. I wonder if they're holding off on Pokemon until the Switch 2 comes out. And I would be interested to see if they've innovated anything with Pokemon mm-hmm. for when that, when that drops. Because with the Switch 2, even though it came out years later after the the. Um, when it was first announced, they did do that Let's Go Pikachu bundle pack, because that's what I got, the bundle. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Didn't they announce a new, wasn't a Pokemon game announced a few at the last My, Nintendo Direct? I, some Something? Yeah, some new Pokemon thing so. is coming. And I wonder if that's what they're saving for the PS5. And I wonder if this is going to be a completely new way that you play Pokemon. Mm-hmm. But they're the saving it, but they're saving it for the Switch 2. I think they're saving a lot of I think they're saving a lot for the Switch 2. It makes sense to do that. PlayStation State of Play though. I saw obviously Ghost of Tsushima, female lead. You're going to see the criticism Ghost of that. Of I've Yote. seen a little bit of that Respect on her. Yeah. Yote. Yeah, Yote. Ghost of Yote. Ghost of Yote. So it's an old, so it's completely okay, so all that's yeah, new. So okay. it's completely mm-hmm. So I've seen some people um, obviously complaining about that, but I heard that Ghost of Tsushima was so good that as long as they got that combat and get yeah, there, I heard it was good they'll too. get over it. I think I want to play Y'all it. I haven't played I think it. I, I got it. I that's one of those exclusives. I still well, you know that's play. you know that's not my my go to for games, let's, but let's... it's it's been a minute since I've actually picked up my PS Five that I feel like maybe I need to dive into some other genres so I can have me some shit to play. Look, look, mm-hmm. look at me, look at me, play that game. Play that game. Mm-hmm. That game is good. That game is. Ralph really said, "Get in it." Ralph said, "Get in the field." Really yeah. As an overall mm-hmm. game, Ghost of Tsushima deserved that game of the year for sure. For the way they, the way it starts and gets you immersed into it, and gets you to actually feel like you're there in the world, is lovely. It's lovely. And okay. I hope and pray that they do the same for Ghost of Yote. Uh The voice actor is uh, Erica Ishii. And if anybody plays Apex, that is the same voice actor for Valkyrie. Okay. I used to like so, Valkyrie. Okay. Yeah. So she, she's a good voice actor. I like, I like Val's voice. So I'm interested to see how, how, she in, how she is in this, you know, fighting, pretty much fighting storytelling game. Mm-hmm. So. yeah the okay. graphics the graphics look nice I was like okay and, and from the way my TL was responding because they made that the very last announcement I was like oh this was the big one this is what everybody was waiting for because if yeah, y'all exactly. would have showed that at the beginning wasn't nobody else going to be watching the rest of the no. state of play <laughs> signing out that's all they yeah. want and I was like okay thanks click drop 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 Astrobot looks fun it reminded me of like those Mario 3D games. And I would check it out just to see like what's the similarities and the differences is. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't watch that. I wasn't mad at the showcase. I wasn't mad at it. I I feel like other stuff is highlighting as it has me distracted though, being that Dragon Age Veilguard is on the way and Eclipsing. Dragon Ball Z is on the way. Eclipsing yeah. it, yeah. But I'm excited for the Ghost of Tsushima fans. They're getting Ghost of Yote. I saw that Keanu Reeves is the voice of Shadow for yeah, a video a sh- game DLC. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a Shadow. It's Sonic something DLC where you can play a Shadow. And it's, yeah, Keanu Reeves. 
because he's Shadow in the movie as well, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see that that's a nice connection. Sega's in their bag. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, I wasn't mad at it. I think they have a lot of good games coming up. I didn't see some that I was fairly interested in, but like I just said previously, um, maybe I just need to open myself to other genres of games and stuff. How'd you feel about that Alan Wake DLC? Did you play Alan Wake, Ralph? I did not. I did okay, because I was going to ask you how you felt about the, the DLC that's coming out. Yeah, I... I have been behind on I have been behind on picking up Adam Wake. I don't even think I bought it yet. Actually, I don't even think it's in my game. <laughs> <laughs> like Bro, that's a, that's how behind we're I becoming am. the adults we hate it. When we used to be like, we'll never stop gaming. We'll never slow down on gaming. Oh, Gets I mean, and has a lot of hobbies. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Gaming ain't slow down, but I just forgot to get the game. I haven't touched it. Cause, Cause you still be on Apex or Ace, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When yeah, that new I'll... battlefield come out, we're gonna be on there. I'm gonna be we gonna be back. Unless they're gonna acquire some IPs, go on a bounty hunt, they gotta create something new. And they just gotta literally invest time into it. They just have to really feed into it. Like, shoot, go buy Spectros from Disney and see if Disney would give y'all let y'all hold one. Yeah. And what you mentioned